back to order, 615 for our second public hearing. We have an administrative appeal for Mr. Plord off of a cease and desist on 5 Quaybog Street. Mr. Plord, and if his attorney is present, you please join us. Where would you like me to sit? Um, maybe on the big chair. Jeff, do you have a... Grab one of them chairs. Jeff, do you want to grab a little chair and just bring it over towards um, Kenny? Hey, Joe, how are you? Good to see you. Go ahead. In attendance, uh, Mr. Plord has filed an appeal based on a cease and desist order, 45 Claybog Street, in regards to his use of the property. Uh, Mr. Thoma, would you like to fill everybody in on the decision? And well, he was given a uh, court decision, uh, I believe last year, and in that decision, he was allowed to basically. Uh, conduct practices, motocross practices at his property. Um, in the interim, we have found out that he is, uh, in fact, running a business over there, and I don't think he's gonna argue with that. Uh, he's charging prices, he's advertising. Uh, it is an accessory use, uh, which, well, which is not allowed in our usage table at all for a motocross, motocross track, and um, so he is operating illegally, as far as I'm concerned. Mr. Plord? I gave him, I, I oh, gave him a okay. cease and desist on May 24th, and he appealed it that's to this why board. Why, that's why we're here. Mr. Plord? Yes, Welcome. Sir. Welcome. You're Mr. Plord? Yes. How are you doing? Good, how are you? So, any, I'm, I'm okay, but thank you. <laughs> um, I know it's argument. Guys, it's like men and him. So what's that? I oh, nothing. That's right. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> there's, there's no need to keep your mouth shut. All right. If we could just speak up, I'm going to be guilty of that as well. I yep. kind of yep. fade and then I have to come back up. Yep. Uh, so you heard uh, Mr. Thomo's rendition of the circumstance. Uh, you are appealing that decision. Yes, sir. And do you do you disagree that you're conducting uh, business? District. Well, I am running a business down there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, here's my two. Okay. And you are? I'm my attorney. Okay. Your name? My name is Joseph Measure. Can you spell that, please? M I Z H I R. And uh, if I may, I'll, I would like to respond and say a few words. Please. Um, I uh, have been working with Dan for quite some time. Uh, I represented him when he bought the property several years ago. I represented him before this board. Uh, a couple of years ago when we appealed a cease and desist by one of the prior zoning enforcement officers uh, where that officer had alleged that the uh, motocross track was a, uh, an illegal activity not allowed by zoning. And we had made the argument that it was grandfathered, that it was a prior uh, non-conforming pre-existing use uh, the track, I don't know, do you feel I should give you a background on the history of the track? I'm very familiar with the history. Okay. As Mr. Plewitt stated, I was a selectman. Okay. Um, but I, I'd like to stop you because I think everybody knows that history, but we're at this point now for the simple fact that we have a, a ruling from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that he's not able to use that as a grandfathered non-conforming lot. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, if I may, my name is Jeffrey Blake, I'm town council. Uh, he, he can use it as, as a non-conforming for, use. For practice use. For, for practice, but I think it's important here to, and I'll quote from the, from the court's decision, um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background here, because it, it is a matter of degree. It says here, while there is a credible, while there is credible evidence of some recreational use at the track at the time the bylaw took effect, the plaintiff has not proved to the court that any competitive racing was occurring at the track at the time the bylaw took effect. The decision goes on to then say 
that there is certainly a difference in the effect on the neighborhood of the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track and numerous commercial competitive races being uh, hosted at the property. So, so essentially what the court found was is that there was a pre-existing non-conforming use which appeared to be in, in, the, in the words of the court occasional motocross rider practicing at the track. I think that the building commissioner, or let's strike that, the zoning enforcement officer here has said, um, based on the, 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 the public record, that Mr. Plort is essentially conducting a, a practice motocross track with memberships that runs, and I'm, I'm sure you're gonna hear this from the audience, uh, that runs seven days a week. And, and does not run okay. seven days a week. All right, six days a week, five doesn't days a week. Doesn't run six days either. Okay. But, so, so but this, this is where we sit. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of degree. So, so when we say matter of degree, is he, by that decision, allowed to, to have paying customers come to that property? My, my thought is, well, and this is, this is, again, it's an interpretation. It says here, there is certainly a difference in the effect on the neighborhood of the occasional motocross rider practicing at the property. So, so that, that leaves it open. It will, to a frequency. And I, and I think what you're here to, to, to determine today is, through the testimony of others and, and, and your zoning enforcement officer, is has he, has he so expanded what, what is outlined by the court so much that, is, that, is, that it has gone beyond the, and I'll quote again, the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track. And if you find that, then he, then he has exceeded and he needs a finding. It's, it's subjective. It, he's got one definition of occasional, you have one definition of occasional, everybody in this room has another definition of occasional. Well, well I, I would suggest that if you sit here and listen to the testimony. I've heard it. I've, I, I know it very well. Well, I, I, and, 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 and again, I would suggest that occasional doesn't mean five days a week. It doesn't mean um, membership sold to a significant amount of people out there in the public. It doesn't mean that there are showers uh, and, and bike washes available. It doesn't mean that there's a pro shop available at the site. So what, 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 what grounds does Mr. Thomo have for a cease and desist? The grounds are that he's exceeded the allowed, the, the non-conforming use as found by the court. And I think that that's what his cease and desist order says. And that's where I'm getting into the subjectivity of the decision. Sure, and, and, and you know what? When, when we come to a pre-existing non-conforming use and whether or not it's exceeded under the so-called powers test, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to sit here and you have to look and say, the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track, does that mean somebody that's there from 10, practicing from 10 o'clock till dusk, five days a week, that are paying customers, where, where there are, uh, I, I believe there were snow cross events, or at least advertise where there's a pro show, where there's a bike wash. So, so I think that that uh, you know, and that's that's your call. So through KP's interpretation, well, well, let, let's I think it's a reasonable interpretation of the zoning I, 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 I understand that. So I'm going to take a step back in, in regards to Town of Brookfield versus Mr. Plord. Right. Is that all done? Everything's done. That right. that case is done, except for of course we have the, just just the, the before, decision yeah. and what what I'm reading. So now we have to get to the subjectivity of that decision, which I thought was more clear than that, but the way that you read it, it's not. So, Mr. Plort, have you worked with the town to get a license, to do things? No, because I... Can, oh, okay. With all due respect, um, I'm here to represent Mr. Plort, and if I can respond to any questions... That's between you and your client, okay. sir, but I'm going to direct my questions to Mr. Plort. Right. And, and you'll allow yeah. me to answer? Yeah, 100%. You. Okay. Um, just a couple things first to clarify what has been said so far. Um, there were essentially two issues before the court. One was, um, has racing continued as a pre-existing non-conforming use and or has it just been practice? And we did not even argue that racing had been continuing and, be, and it should have been allowed. We essentially said, look, it's been used as a practice track. We, we, we uh, concede that. At one time, there were races there, everyone agrees, but those stopped, and we don't expect um, that racing will now be allowed there because it hasn't continued. 
So as far as the practicing goes, um, that was the only issue before the court, and of course the court did find that it was a grandfathered use. Now, the other thing that you need to know is this issue was already brought by town council back to the court after the decision was issued. Mm -hmm. A motion was filed for clarification asking the court to uh, limit the hours, limit the number of riders, essentially everything that they're now asking you to do. That motion was denied. They didn't tell you that. Okay. Uh, no, what, it was, it was, there was no action taken on it. There was no action taken on it, okay. Based um, on what grounds, Jeff? Uh, based on the ground that I think the judge, frankly, I think the judge retired. And counsel also argued that if we wanted to do that, if, if we believe that it was a change or a substantial extension, then we should have filed a cease and desist and we should come before the ZBA. That was his argument. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of upset that we spent all this money, had all this animosity towards a businessman in town and, and his neighbors, and nothing got resolved. Um, the other thing that I would respond to is that the track is essentially being used in the same exact manner it's always been used since uh, Mr. Uh, no. No. Guys, guys, guys. Wait, get turn, please. Mr. Wallace owned it. Um, when Mr. Wallace owned it, uh, he ran a business out of that, uh, or he had a workshop. I don't know whether he was, uh, he was doing woodworking. And the, the, uh, the track was open for anyone to use while he was there. Mr. Plord's uh, operating a business uh, at, the same, at the same location. And people are allowed to come there when he's there opening his uh, vending business. Mm -hmm. Now, you raise a good issue, too, is that, okay, um, the zoning enforcement officer has issued a cease and desist, saying that no riding can go on at the property. Well, we know that riding can happen because we've well, already... Is it, is it riding or it business? Practice. practice is allowed, business. I said. Business. I didn't... Yes. Well, I'll look at it closely, but I didn't... I just said cease and desist. Right. But... He doesn't say, okay, you need to go back to the same conditions that Mr. Wallace had, and you ha can be open on these certain days for these certain hours. You can only have these certain riders. He can't do that because there's never been any restrictions. It's always just been open for any time, any place, any number of riders. So I, I understand the arguments. Why, why can't we work on this? And I know you're... you're your brow's going a little bit crazy. I don't know where you're going with so, this, so that's why. Just like his attorney mm -hmm. states, limit the size of bikes or mufflers or times or shrubbery or something that we can do to help these people out here but allow him to use his land. Because that court decision, in my opinion, allows him to use his land. He can use his property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can use it. And he can run dirt he bikes. Can, he can run all, practices, yes. And he can't get, run a business there. Yeah, and and, and he, that's what he's been he doing. He can get 100 people in there, say, come on in, be as loud as you want. He can invite his friends, absolutely. So why can't we work with Mr. Plort on helping each other? Because of Helping this all court, these people this, out here. And this court each ruling other. indicates, dictates what's what we can do. The court ruling. I think, we can't, very, I think it's very subjective. It doesn't matter. It's still a court ruling. We have to act within the court ruling. That says he can still use the property. Right? Yes, but I never said he couldn't. I'm saying he can't run it as a business, according to the court ruling. Do you read it that way, Jeff? Well, I, 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 I do read that uh, I think broadly read. And again, as you correctly pointed out, that uh, there is some room for interpretation. I think broadly read that, that he can't use it for it's, it's a commercial use. That, that I, I think it prohibits a commercial use and only allows for the occasional motocross rider at the track practice. Now, with respect to... So, so can I stop you there? Yeah. If it's the occasional practice that that individual is paying for, you believe that that's excluded? Uh, and it says here, and, and numerous commercial competitive races being hosted, uh, is that excluded? Uh, under the court ruling, what the court found was that the historic use of the property was for, again, the occasional motocross rider for practice, and that throughout that time there had been some contributions to uh, the track owner, Mr. Wallace, for the upkeep and maintenance of the track. Um, from uh, what, what, I, what, what I've seen in this file from the zoning enforcement officer, it appears to be going far, far beyond that. Um, I don't know, and you can, might be able to ask Mr. Plord or his attorney, 
um, how much the memberships are and, and how many people are in the how many people have signed up and are members for practicing. Uh, but the occasional motocross rider doesn't mean that rider one goes there twice a week and then rider two goes there twice a week and then you know you got 400 riders going there twice a week so that it's run from four o'clock uh, strike that 10 o'clock in the morning and, until uh, dark. Uh, I think the occasional motocross rider means occasionally at the track somebody's using the track. Now to go back to your question, could the town and Mr. Plur come up with a with a solution and, and, and still conform with this? I, I'm sure we could. I, I, I'm sure that the, I'm sure that the town and Mr. Plur, if both are willing to work together on it, I, I'm sure that there is leeway in this decision where who, we could we could do both. We who, could, who would he have to work with? He would have to work with the zoning enforcement officer. Strictly. Yeah. Why don't you put a committee together of neighbors and town officials? So, Mr. Plour, the, the way the wind's blowing is that you're not going to win your appeal this evening. Uh, I'm a very blunt, open person. I, I hope you respect that. Um, are you willing to work with the town to have a win-win situation? We've been very willing in the past to do that. Um, the last court case. Stop laughing. You guys, we, guys, stop please. Laughing. You that, guys that, that's that's work a, and that's the second help. interruption. If there's another <laughs> interruption, I'm just going to have to clear the whole room. Um, I submitted a uh, proposed uh, list of operating days. Operating. This was during the while the other case was pending. Before we went to trial, I had submitted a proposal to Jeff for uh, certain days, certain hours, and uh, he, I'm not sure what he did with it, but it didn't go any further. There was what, no... What, what about baff, baffling type systems, shrubbery? No, we, uh, but my point is this. We've always been available for talking and working this out. I submitted a proposal. It was the town, whether it was the zoning board or the town of selectmen, who did not want to engage in settlement. So we, you well, know... We're, we're, that, we're over that bridge. And, and we're fine with that. And that's, yeah. that's where I've I mean, asked town council. I know it's probably going to have a hard time convincing people in this room of this, but oh, 100%. Dan's a very reasonable person. But you have person. to understand that, that we're here to represent, yeah. through the Board of Selectmen, these people that sit here and pay taxes to listen to that. <laughs> to listen to what? Mm -hmm. to, to the noise. Well, it's a little I've, 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 had, I've, had I've had the complaints come across my desk when I was there for six years, so I'm very familiar with it. But, but I understand... A gentleman buying a piece of property, thinking he was grandfathered, wanting to start a business, but in anything, you just have to work together. I, you don't feel that we can work with Mr. Plourd? I didn't say that. Absolutely. I'm asking. I guess that's the question. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Are you willing to? Of course I am. Mr. Plourd, are you willing to? Yes. Yeah, well, but, you know, it's always good to talk. There's nothing wrong with talking. I mean... But, but to get to a point where... We're going to be satisfied as a town. Well, I don't know. I well, it's mean, got to satisfy I mean, both sides. Yeah, I, you know I, what I mean? It can't just satisfy I want a, I want a win win situation. Too. You know what I mean? I mean, I've been fighting this since I bought the property. Yeah. And, you know, the town didn't work, want to work with me from the get go. I had a meeting with Clarence Snyder in the police station. And he wanted to work things out with me. And he went to, I told him my hours and operations. He said, you know what? That does not seem unreasonable. Came back and talked to the other select board. They didn't want to even, they didn't even want to listen to it. They all disagreed. No one wants to call. They say I'm impossible to work with. Well, but if you ask anybody that knows me, I'm a very calm individual. I am very nice to everybody. Ask Charlie. I know Charlie quite well. I know Roger quite well. And I this mean, is the first I'm time we've getting, ever, I'm we've getting ever attacked met. by the selectmen all the time. All the time. I have an air and noise study that I did on my own okay. because of the noise that they're talking about. Let's Stick to the issue. We're willing well, that, to talk. That is, the issue, that is yeah. the issue, Council. It, but it's, it's the noise. The only issue. Well, is the noise. we're talking about whether we're going to settle the case. Is and, I, and it's I'm the saying. noise. But okay. but moving forward, I still believe that the appeal is not favorable. He's he's going to lose the appeal this evening. But moving forward, working with the gentleman, we have to abide by the zoning bylaws of this town. Correct. I do. And, and you, you, have, you, you, have his, you, yes. you have his counsel and himself saying that he's willing to do that. We the select, have, the selectmen are taken out of the picture now. It's solely in your hands with representation of town council. We can, I'm sure we can work together if Mr. Plaudes is willing to compromise. So th pull through the, through the board. Do you believe that we're not going to approve this 
Yes, sir. I, I would just suggest that if, if this is going to be the outcome, I, I would suggest really that we just continue this hearing for two weeks. And that way, if we're able to, to, to resolve it, we're able to resolve it. If not, then we can come back um, rather than, than taking a vote to, tonight. Um, unless, I mean, it's really up to you, but I don't know what you're going to vote. If you're going to vote it up or down. I mean, if you're going to vote it <clears throat> as so on you, the merits, so I would ask, I would have the, the, the public give their input. So you, but, so I'm going to take a step back and my mind's reeling. So in order for us, for, the reason for us to reconvene in two weeks would be to possibly give him some type of lenience through zoning. Well, to, to continue this hearing and to determine whether or not you're going to uphold the cease and desist. Um, if we're able to reach an agreement, then, um, you know, at that point, we can, we, can, we can come before the board or we can, I suppose we'd come before the board and then we would present the agreement, both parties, and the board would vote, vote that as part of their decision. But there's really no decision to be made. If, if he still has to be compliant. Right, but there may be. He, we Our may zoning be, enforcement officer believes he's non-compliant. But he may be able to say that I'll do X, Y, and Z, which then our whoops, sorry, then our zoning enforcement officer believes will come into compliance. He'll put that, will memorialize that here in a ZBA decision, and that will be the the decision, and that will be what what heretofore everybody um, lives with, including him if, if and, like and his successors. So what I'm going to do, is the board okay with continuing this in two weeks? You, because you have to attend. Are we okay with that? I would ask, the, I'd ask the applicant too if he's okay with Yeah, that. Um, I know I'm going to be, do you have something like in the beginning of August, around August 8th? I'm in the haunt on August 8th, but okay. I can probably do any other day from there. Like, so I guess the question, Mr. Plort, is are you willing to to curb the noise while we work on this? Well, well, what do you mean by curb the noise? I mean, you can't make, a, make, make a this. conscious effort to minimize? Because um, right now, as it stands, if we take a vote tonight, he's done. He's, well, no. Well, you can appeal it, yada, yada. Yeah. And we would, and we would ask yeah. for attorney's fees and costs. And there's a lot of things I haven't been able to say tonight that I, if you we, want you to hear from say me. say whatever you'd like, okay. sir. A um, couple things. Uh, first of all, I believe that very strongly that this decision that town council and, and Mr. Tomo, the Tomo, 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 they're mischaracterizing it greatly because they keep using this word occasional. The only issue before the court when we went to trial was was this a grandfathered activity? And all we needed to show, as you probably all know, is that there was never a period longer than two years where the track was not used. It wasn't, we weren't there to prove how many people were riding, how often it was used, what they were paying. Those were not issues before the court. The only court is, is this track grandfathered? And the answer was, of course, yes. Now, they've taken a small part of that decision where the judge um, compares racing to practicing. And in order to say that racing cannot continue, she says, you know, there's a difference between racing and occasional motocross practicing. She doesn't say or make any finding that that's all that's going on at the track. And if we had to, we could have brought in witnesses to show that it was used every day. Um, the fees, as a matter of fact, Kenny, you answered interrogatories in that question. You said that your grandson was paying $500 a year to practice. 600. There. 600. So Mr. Thomo says, you know, now you're charging 600. Well, your grandson was riding there how many years ago? But that makes it, that makes it so that you're running two businesses on the same okay. piece of property, well, which is against the bylaws. But what I'm saying is people have been paying $600 for a long time. Well, they've been paying it. Sure. OK. That's not in the cease and desist, and they don't tell you that. Um, so. There's no doubt in my mind, if we go back, we're going to bring in witnesses and we're going to show that the track has always been used the same way it is now. It's the same layout. It's always been available. There's never been restricted hours. There's never been restricted but, riders. But Mr. Cleveland brings up the point of one of the cease and desist is that he's operating second business without permits. Well, I'm, I mean, 
You're telling us that this it's, is a business. It's, it's grandfathered. It's been going on since no. since uh, Mr. Wallace owned it, and he was had his own building there, running his woodworking shop. So I mean, there's always been two businesses there. It's a machine shop. Machine shop. I mean, I don't. These are all new issues that I hadn't heard before, but. It's the same thing. He's doing the same thing that Mr. Wallace was doing. Well, you had a copy of Mr. Thomo's cease and desist, right? Yes. Yeah. But there's other things going on there, too, Council. There's like a bike pro shop, the showers, uh, the bike wash. It's a, it's, there's many businesses going on down there. And they need a permit. If you're going to do anything extra, you need a permit. If it's allowed, I'm saying. And, and there's no permit. Well, that's, they're incidental to the use, and you can't expand to some extent. That's what I'm saying. There's, there's a lot of things going on down there. That's. I really think all this can be resolved in a, in a discussion, in a meeting of the minds. I really do. Last thing that I wanted to say was about the noise. And we, yes, we have had, I mean, the easiest way to shut the track down would be to have someone say that it doesn't meet the mm -hmm. legal limits for sound, but it does. Uh, and if you look at an aerial photo, you'll see that this track is, I mean, I don't, I mean, my numbers probably aren't exact, but there's a huge radius where there isn't any other buildings or any other abutters, almost a mile wide. And I've done, over the last 20 years, done a, quite a few permits for motocross tracks throughout New England. Well, the, the issue, sir, is, is the water. It's, it's carrying it's the, what? the water the that's wa adjacent to his property, the lake. Yeah, well, you're saying that that causes the noise to the carry The water around. level changes the sound effect across the whole area. There's a lot of things that change, worry that, you know, the wind, um, the ambient. But, you know, but you understand that this, there wouldn't be a camera in this room, there wouldn't be people in this room unless there was an issue. There, there's obviously an issue. Well, there's not an issue as far as legality goes because he meets the criteria. There's an issue because some people think that you should just move to the country and not hear any noise. Other people think you go to the country to ride dirt bikes. Um, and, you know, that track's been there since 1982, and it's going to continue to be there. I mean... So, Mr. Port, if we continue this, are you willing to work with Mr. Thelmo? But, Mr. Chairman, also, the things that I listed earlier, the bike wash, that wasn't there back then. All that is new stuff now that he, Mr. Plaudes had. It is a hose and a I'm just saying, washer. it's all extra stuff. That's it's a hose stuff and that requires. So are you, are you stepping back from trying to work with him if we continue? I don't know if he's going to be willing to... I've heard that he will be. I... Not getting those. That. So, out, out of your your mouth, Mr. Port, are you willing to work? With I've the said it. I've said it unconditionally many times. That out, out of your lips, sir. It's, up, it's between me and my attorney because I this man I trust, and whatever he says, I will do. I'll be glad to go to court. I don't have any doubt we're going to win this again and get attorney's fees, okay? A court is not going to like this. They didn't like it last time. They're going to like it less this time. We're wasting their time. But having said that, I'm going to sit down I'm with anybody here. here. Room, Nick. Don't worry about it. And, uh, I just, I want to get, just get to them, though. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But I want to get to this, to the meeting of the minds. But uh, I'm all about settlement, mm -hmm. and I'm all about trying to work things out. Oh, so I've, I've heard that. So if you want to speak on this issue, I ask you to please stand and speak loudly. So I'm going to go with ladies first. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Maureen <laughs> Mariano. Can I ask a question to them through you? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your inter what is their interpretation of occasional? This okay. is my, my question. I started to explain that okay. to um, the board. That's not what the ruling um, the That's judge not what I'm asking you though. That's not what I'm asking him. I'm just asking what his interpretation is. Well, I don't know. It's like, like it's been said, it's occasional, and we don't feel like we're limited to that, that that was just uh, verbiage that was in the decision, but that wasn't before the court. So uh, am I misunderstanding to you, to your counsel, through you, that when you say in, in the ruling that was previous, I don't even know when it was or anything, but that it shouldn't be occasional? Am I misinterpreting something that that they were okay to operate occasionally? You you were not misinterpreting. Okay. And in order for me really to, it, if you don't mind, in order for me to really fully uh, answer that question, uh, a pre-existing non-conforming use. If zoning comes into effect tomorrow, and you have a a, 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 a dress shop, 
and it's 200 square feet and that that use is no longer allowed in that zone five years from now you decide that you want to increase your dress shop to a dress shop a fitting room uh, a department store and you want to increase it to 10,000 square feet the use of selling dresses is grandfather there is a pre-existing non-conforming use however at some point and there's a test for this at some point you've expanded beyond that what was protected so in interpreting this decision I try to take a look at what is protected and the court has said that there certainly it, there is certainly a difference in the effect on the neighborhood of the occasional motocross rider practicing at the track and the numerous com uh, commercial competitive races being hosted there. In conclusion, the plaintiff can use the track for practice, but there we run into this issue of, and a pre-existing non-conforming use, when do we go beyond what was protected? And the zoning enforcement officer is saying that they've gone beyond that. Okay. thank you. Second question, if I might, um, for you. I just got this today. The only thing that I know is that uh, there was tests done and that the findings were within the legal limits. Were they done both within? The I don't have all the specifics. Site? I don't have anything else I can really share with you right now. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, and to you, Mr. Chairman, um, I strongly suggest suggest only that if you're going to have a meeting of the minds, who seem to be very willing. I think you should outstretch to get some neighbors or some other people, not just the authorities that be. Sometimes when you get your paradigm and you hear something from somebody else, you hear it instead of with the closed ears and I have to win this and I'm not right and they're wrong and I, it doesn't always work that way. And we might say something, but they might say something that says, oh yeah, we can do that. So I, but that's a suggestion that you open up more <laughs> I'm going to go with the women first. Yes, ma'am. Marlene Burbank. A um, couple of comments. Someone has been alluded to already that um, the track before, and what I believe the judge approved, was a pre existing use. And I believe that this has gone way beyond the pre existing use. I mean, before it was a track, I think the only money or labor that was exchange was to keep the track running, you know, moving dirt around, whatever the case had to be. It didn't include stores, it didn't include fees, it didn't include um, washing. And by the way, the washing, if it's just a hose, as I think I heard the attorney say, are there oils and grease and stuff being washed away? Because I never knew anything about this hose thing until tonight. Um, and I had something else. We'll come back to you if you want. You're better. Thank you. <laughs> yes, um, I know there's a cease and desist that was apparently put out on May 24th, but he has not ceased and desisted at all. Right. And um, so what's to say that we put this off, so we're going to have to listen. And the, the occasional, by the way, is every day of the week, just about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seriously. I mean, I've lived in this yeah. town for 45 years. And I've been a good citizen, and um, I can't believe that the, the level of noise, I think it's even worse this year than it was last year. I don't know what they're doing. I think the whole idea is to make noise. And, and you can get five and six of them going, and it, it's, you can't be outside. Literally, you cannot be outside. If you wanted to sell your house, which I guess some people are trying to sell their house, you can't, I don't know when you can do it, because somebody would say, what's that noise in the background? It's constant, seriously, it's constant. And so are we to assume the cease and desist, which he hasn't honored yet, is going to take, is, he's going to honor it now? For two weeks or before or when the next meeting is? How can he get away with not honoring the, the cease and desist? I don't understand. My, my belief is as long as there's an appeal, he doesn't have to. Is that correct, Jeff? Or? Typically that's the way that it's, that it's uh, done. If during an appeal period, the, the, the town's back off. I, I suppose that I think we could probably legally go in and enforce it at this point, but of course, 
my brother here will simply argue, look, this is before the ZBA, let them make a decision, and it's likely Superior Court will say, yeah, let them make the decision, then, uh, then, then they'll weigh in after you weigh in. And in my that sometimes it's till 7 and 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that, but 20, that, that's, 20 where that's, that's where the agreement should, yeah. that there should be some stipulations. I mean, I can't understand why there's no re regulations at all. I, I agree. Yes, ma'am. The, the other thing I wanted to say is Mr. Plewick has said, and I don't think he hides the fact that he has said, I have a lot of money and I will fight this as long as it takes. And a man who says something like that, in my opinion, is not willing to negotiate. So I'm requesting that his appeal be denied because of that. If they can work something out, great, we can deal with that and move forward. But I don't think you give some, you deny, I don't think you grant somebody an appeal when they walk in with that kind of an attitude. Well, the only attitude I heard was from you, so. But not, not you giving an attitude, but <laughs> expressing his attitude prior, which I haven't heard. So. I think other people in the room have heard the same thing. Okay, All right. thank you. Yes, sir. I, I live in the neighborhood, and I do occasionally hear the noise. Your name, please. Your name, please. Hey, I'm Roger Kieran. Thank you. I live on, uh, on Maple Street. <clears throat> so uh, I do occasionally do hear the motorcycle noise, but to me it's not offensive. But I don't live right next door to um, Living in a bedroom community where the tax base is, is basically all homeowners, I find it appalling that the town is not open to open letting new businesses come in and working with us. Put control measures in place that is acceptable to the abutters. Make them, make them do the improvements that are, that are okay to the abutters. Give them the permits and tax them. I welcome that. I think that would be a great thing. That's Even my desire. We can work on that. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Miles, so Greg, Greg, Greg Berard, on the 41 Pine Lane. Uh, my viewpoint is pretty much the same people I had. 20 years ago, I moved to this town. I lived in Worcester next to 290. It's like being back there now. I go sit on my deck in the morning, I have a nice cup of coffee, I go, eh, it's ridiculous. Like mosquitoes buzzing around my goddamn head, by the French. Wife's not too happy either. They want to run a business, fine, just find a way to tone it down or something. It's ridiculous. But none of us moved out here to hear the friggin' goddamn bites. Right. You know? I, I've got bears running around back in my head, I've got deer everywhere, and I gotta hear that stuff. You know, and it's, it's not just in the morning, it's, it's in the evenings and the afternoons. But there's got to be some kind of compromise where they can run a business, but it's not, especially the morning house guys, that's just, my wife works nights. You don't have to face her in the morning. I do. She scares the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Um, I'm trying to be practical as well as I'm going to say that. Uh, Jeff Clark, 38 Pine Lane, um, is I'm trying to be practical and logistical, but logistics oriented here. Given the tension that I feel, if the board was to do anything besides vote tonight, I would suggest a structured, mediated discussion with an independent situation or person in there with both parties coming to talk about whatever they need to talk about with uh, someone who is basically impartial and can sort of, you know, take, take both sides into account before they uh, do anything. Otherwise, I think it's, it's, it's just based on what I've seen here, it's just going to be another so me, go me, around in circles. My, my belief was that they could work it out. Did you want somebody else in the room to mediate? Or? Well, my suggestion is that we just simply, you know, can we've made a proposal already before. I can, I got to talk to Dan, see if he's still willing to do that. And if he is, then I think the ball's in your court, or you know, whoever is going to be representative, whether it's, it's Jeff. The representative or, is Mr. Thelma. Okay. He's going to have to look at that and decide whether or not he can agree to it now that we've already gone to court and established that it is grandfathered, or if not, um, maybe there's something that uh, you know, he can suggest as a counteroffer. And you're willing to give and take? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we haven't really talked settlements yeah. since because we, we did win the case, and um, but now we're, we're we're kicking a can down the down the road where it's open to interpretation. Like I say, we're yeah. very happy to go back to court if we have to. I don't want to. Yes, sir. If you could, what I would like to see happen seriously, if you have a rule, make a ruling tonight with an addendum on it that we.
but make a ruling tonight. If, if, that if, what, no? if we make a ruling, then the, the hearing's over. I, I would suggest, yeah, if you make a ruling, can't the hearing's more. over, and then we can't make a ruling that would encompass our, our, our settlement. So I would strongly suggest that if, if they'll agree to continue, we continue okay. it to a week, two right. weeks, three weeks, whatever. And, and, and I'm totally willing, if you want that mediator, if you want to reach out to me, give me a call. Happy to sit in the room with both of you. I think I'm a pretty open-minded guy. Let me go back to, like I said, we made a proposal. Let me talk to Dan. I'll talk to him when we finish here tonight. Yeah. And he can think about it over the evening. Tomorrow, I'll either, you know, we'll either offer the same thing or some sort of, and I can either, you know, fax we'll it or we'll email it. We'll discuss if we want to continue because I'm just speaking off. I'm sorry? And we'll discuss if we want to continue because we haven't yeah. heard the board and we'll talk about dates. Yeah. Are you done, sir? Right. Yes, sir. I, I'm Sorry. That's okay. I, I can't be more emphatic that you need someone who's impartial in that room because it's not going to go anywhere. You're going to go around in a circle and the whole thing's going to come back in your laps again. Well it's said. Going well said. It's going to go before the, well the court again. I don't, I don't see enough whatever to, to get this moved ahead and I think it's very important for the people here who live next to the place to get some resolution without going around like this. Yeah, Gary. Uh, Let's uh, clarify a few things. I'm, I'm Gary Lincoln. I live a quarter of a mile away from Playboy Street, not a mile away. So the radius is not a mile. There's, there's people affected a quarter of a mile away. So that's number one. Number two, uh, he talks about working with the town. Well, he's got a sign up that says no Brookfield town officials allowed on the site, right? So that's a willingness to work with the town. And, and, and thirdly, of course, uh, you know, cease and desist, he didn't bother cease and desist. He had people there racing the very day he was issued the order. So he's not about to work with the town. He doesn't believe that there should be any licensing authority or anybody to set down some rules as far as what the noise is. And the noise is obnoxious. And uh, absolutely, the, the uh, sound levels, we do have a sound level bylaw in the town. And, uh, <clears throat> and the sound levels are well above that. And so there needs to be some limitations on noise. And he's not going to do that. You know, so he, he's no more going to work with the town than the man the more. He hasn't ever, and he just has, has no intention of doing so. And so that's what we're dealing with here. So you give him an inch, and he's going to take a mile. And this is what he's done already with this, uh, with the interpretation of the, the, the judge's ruling. And, uh, and he's just blown it all up into this big full blown mm -hmm. MX-13 baloney with uh, how many events planned for the next uh, um, two or three months, he has three and four and five events with uh, I don't know how many bikes and everything else. Nobody can just go down there and see what's going on. And, uh, and so it, it's just totally out of hand. And he, and he thinks he doesn't have to pay any attention to anybody. And that's partially due to his lawyer who thinks that uh, they won. And uh, so we can, he's got car plant and he can do anything he wants to. And so that's what we're up against. And there's a lot of people here that, that are affected by this and, uh, and are upset as much as I am. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Don Taft, uh, I'm not in a butter, but a resident of the town. You say that you've made a proposal. Would you care to share that with us tonight? I didn't, I mean, I could probably go through my file. I don't remember what it was, if you want me to answer that. Because I remember the Do you guys think that that's productive to have this conversation tonight? I don't no, think I don't think it's productive. I, I say we let them work on it if we as a board can agree. All right. From my perspective, occasional is less than half. So if there are seven days a week, less than half is three. If there's eight, 12 hours in a day, Less than half of that is less than six. You want to take that into consideration for occasion? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Michael Rocker. I'm in the Brookfield Conservation Commission. Um, we're on the road a lot. We do a lot of cleanup and walking around. And I can't help but notice that there's a sign that says, no trespassing, and it's just town officials. And as a member of the Conservation Commission, we have a vested interest in just checking the weather. <laughs> In the floodplain, is there a reason why we can't go down there? Well, can I answer that? 100%. Um, Conservation's commission is to uh, rule on applications 
and set guidelines and rules for projects that have an impact on wetlands. It's not an enforcement agency. Yes. There's not, so there's no reason for you to go on and police his property, just like there's no reason to police if anyone else's. See if there's a, a problem going on. Well, if you have a legitimate you have to take the actual word. Yeah. If you have a legitimate concern, if somebody signs a complaint and it's legitimate and you want to talk yeah, about if it. You can't, if you can't do the property, you're not going to have a complaint. Well, this Certainly is. Certainly the people who come down on the motor cross, you might got to come to us and say, wow, this is a complaint. Well, and, and, and it's just an inspection. Well, you don't have that right, and this is the United States, and we exercise our right to not have any kind of uh, government agency come on the property that's not allowed. So. Um, the, the, the ambulance is allowed down there when they picked up the dead kid, and the other kid broke his neck. That was, believe me, this is going to be going on for too long. And you came before our conservation commission back in 2013 and 2014. We'll see. And we have the, we have minutes. And you said it's for private use only. When you I, yeah. I mean, I don't know what. I mean, Would I'm you not. Would like to see the minutes that you bring? Yeah. I don't really care to get into an I, argument. I, I, we, we can have this discussion okay. together. Okay. But Mr. Chairman. Have another meeting. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Do we have one more? I thought we had two more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to speak? I just wanted to sort of add, and he brought it up. Somebody actually got killed down there. And so at what point is the town going to be liable because they didn't do anything? Just, just food for thought. Hi, Steve. Through you, I just want to say that the group of people that I'm with here tonight don't want to stop his business. We're concerned with the noise. I am, personally. I'm not going to say for anybody else who came with me. I'd like to sit out on my deck, view the river, and have some enjoyment. <coughs> I don't want to see him have to close his business, and I don't want him to think we're all against him running the business. We're just concerned. We want to work with him, if we can, to curtail the hours, maybe, and the noise levels. That's what we're here for. Board, Thank any you. discussions with the board? I think you got a one more Yes, one second. I'm sorry? Beth, yeah. Uh, Name, please. Beth Coughlin. Uh, so I'm on the board of selectmen. Uh, I have been in contact with the whole team since the bottom. Okay. Sorry. Uh, board, I'm sorry. No problem. No, it's not intentional. We may or we may. I contacted him last fall. The biggest concern that I have is that he did not reinitiate contact after that time, very polite conversation, it's, it seemed like we might be able to find some common ground. He didn't respond to any of my attempts to contact until after the season desist order was actually issued. Okay. So I, I think that there is a little bit of um, disingenuousness, probably that's the wrong word, okay. Uh, to say, hey, I'm ready to work with the town, okay? Well, he's, he, 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 you're putting words in his mouth. I, I, I'm going to take a step back. I, I'm hopeful and optimistic that we could do something. I, I get it. So I think that there could be room to do that, okay? So long as, and, and I really like this idea of mediator, because at this point, I think we have a lot of anger in this town because of the noise levels, okay? And because that the hours have been not just variable, but very late some nights. I, I can tell you right now, I'm lucky. I live in a portion of town where there's a couple of hills that, that it hits and a bunch of houses that it hits before it hits my house. And because I don't like getting my neighbors angry because I got way too many dogs, I keep my windows shut so it's not as big an issue for me as it is for people that want to sit out on the porch next to the water. I get it, it doesn't touch me personally, okay? So, but, it, it can't be this, well, I won the case, so it's, it, you know, get off my back. It's got to be I, I get being, it. A good, being a good neighbor, right? And, and it sounds like that's what the folks up from the end of Tom's are, are talking about, is that we're across the water, we just want a good neighbor, okay? There are voluntary actions that you could take to mitigate the noise, that I even had the discussion privately about that, okay? Um, that maybe they can take and maybe they haven't been, but because of this prohibition for, for town employees to even step foot on the property, okay, um, makes it really hard to have a good 
But you're, you're, you're reiterating the anger and the resentment, and it's, I don't think it's productive towards where we want to be moving towards. Well, no, I, I think it can be. I think we need to establish the fact that there have been some outreach, okay? A lot of the offices that we've been involved with have been Is that French? As, as much as I don't want to, as much as I don't want to cut you off, Beth, you keep reiterating everything you're saying and what the crowd's saying. What we said before, we we're almost 45 minutes past our next hearing. Okay. Great. Thank but you. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that it's got to be legit. I, I get your point. We made that one as well. Any discussion through the board? Yes, sir. Sure. I'm sorry. I didn't even see Brian from Pine Lane, live on the lake, bought the property in '73, raised the kids there. Absolutely decided this is where I wanted to spend the rest of my life because I could go out in my yard anytime and it was so serene and so quiet I could hear the wing beats of dust flying overhead. That's why I bought the property, that's why I've sunk hundreds of thousands of dollars into the property. This is where I'd like to stay. But now I have to close my skylights. I haven't had them open in four or five years because the sound pours in. I, actually, I can't ventilate the bathroom on the second floor because if I open the window, the sound pours in. We hear the house. We hear the sound in our house. Thank you. Support? So I like to Really quick, Dave. Uh, I think your board should come up with someone else besides the zoning officer because I know he will not be I, I, I think I, you, as a, well, just let me speak. I think you should find, like the gentleman suggested, find an independent person, have the zoning officer sit in doing the negotiations, but you should really have someone else do the negotiations so for the town. The way that I see this, and through, through counsel, through his, what he's basically stating, is that it's going to be a back and forth via email or whatnot. I don't really see it face to face. I'd love it. Why can't be, we do it face to face? I'd love it to be face to face. And, and if this board doesn't mind, if you two gentlemen don't mind, I, I would be more than willing to sit in between. Dan Claude is not an evil man. He's not a bad man. I mean, a lot of people are mad at him, but he, I've spoken with him before in the past, and he's a nice guy. So personally, he's a really nice guy. He's running a business. He wants to take care of his business. I understand that. Um, I, Mr. Holcraft, I represent the town and the bylaws of the town. I don't take things personally. You cannot so, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes, I will do whatever you need to do. What, whatever this board discusses whatever. and doesn't offend you too. I don't care. All right, so we're, we're done with, with the public section. We continue to start like seven. So is, is that the desire of this board to continue? Part of me says it might be a good thing, and part of me says it might not be. Yes, sir. 100%. 
what I, what I see here is that these guys have already won a court case yep. that says that they can legally do what they're doing. To, what, we, what we've got in front of us is the fact that they've got additional principal uses that they need to handle. So they need to come to us and get additional principal uses for the additional things he's doing. He's already okay to do his own trust. But, but am I, the, am I wrong? I, I would disagree. There's a word in there, occasional. And it, and he, it's occasional is interpretive. Yeah. As, and, and I don't want to have to go in front of a judge and rule against the town of Brookfield when we have an individual that's willing to work with okay. the town I'm to just, alleviate the lives of the I just make sure I was thinking straight. You are. That he's leaving to do his so, so, Kenny, when you say that long of a time frame, what's wrong with two weeks on the 31st? I'm not going to be here. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I know I can't be here then. If it's negotiated prior to that, do you need to be here? Well, no. I mean, if they have a settlement, then I'll it, It's going to be one of two things. It's either a settlement or we come back and we either approve it or we deny it. Okay. Unfortunately, I, I can't be available. I'm and again, handling a jury trial. The, the, sa the same issue, Mr. Thomas. Thomas, does he need to be here? If we have a settlement, I, I don't think I'd have settlement, no one I don't have to be here. Yeah, no, no. If there's a settlement, yes. If there's I'd, agreement, I'd, like, no. I'd like to see it two weeks. It alleviates a lot of the, the apprehension in this room. Are you guys willing to do two weeks? Is the 31st work for you guys? May, I mean, again, I don't mean to interrupt, but yep. that's not a lot of time when you're talking about, you know, I don't, I mean, I, I think the issues are, are very well known. I, I think you could lay them out in five but or six bullets. Okay. So I mean, you're it's just a decision if, if your client wants to work with Mr. Thelma or not. I think two weeks is probably double the time that we need. I, I think we can get this done tomorrow, to be honest with you. Well, we haven't even really begun to establish what you're looking for and what we're looking for. and. You know, there hasn't been any talk about that. You know, I've, I've had plenty of talk in my boards, and I, I'm sure you're privy to them. Came up in court. It's just the noise. We have a zoning enforcement officer stating secondary use yeah, but hours of, ops were, um, I know those uh, operation are, for that definition of occasional. I think those three things are huge. Should be right on the top, and I'm sure you can come up with a couple more easily. I want this to be a win-win for everyone in this room. Okay. So are we okay with two weeks, ladies and gentlemen? The 31st, you said? Yep, July. Yeah. Are we okay with that? Yes. 6 p.m. So I'm going to entertain a motion to continue this public hearing. Possible negotiations to reconvene on July 31st. I think he's got my number. I'd like to make a motion that we continue the hearing until July 31st at 6 p.m. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Hearing is adjourned. It's 7 12. How you been, man? We're in recess until. Uh, How you been? I'm sending you an email. I've been all right. I'm sending you an email. I'm back in the hole. All right, ladies and gentlemen. For Mr. Holcraft is 720. Again, it is another administrative appeal for sick. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to talk, please take that out of this room. That's yours. Thank you. Administrative appeal filed by Mr. Holcraft for 6 South Maple Street. Mr. Thomo, please explain. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, Mr. Holcraft was issued a uh, violation on May 23rd, 2018. 2018 for uh, uh, junk material, leaving junk material at his uh, address at 6 South Maple Street in Brookfield. That's, uh, that is a violation of town bylaws, um, section four, district <coughs> use regulation C, environmental control districts B, prohibited use of all districts. Uh, all uses which are excessively obnoxious, hazardous, dangerous to the neighborhood property, all open air storage of junk salvage materials. Uh, and except as otherwise provided in this bylaw, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I gave him three days to bring the property into compliance. He failed. Um, he is right now, in the past month and a half, he has been bringing property or material from 90 Lake Road to that property to dispose of, basically. Um, 
He's not allowed to do that by the, by the town bylaws, um, and that's why we're here. He appealed that decision, so we're here with you. Mr. Holcraft, what do you say of the charges? Uh, first of all, this whole case is already in federal court. This whole exact thing, I was violated for leaving stuff outside of the shed or on the property, uh, not having shrubbery and sign issues. This is already in federal court. Um, and if you don't want to, if you don't want to go along with that, uh, I'm having a uh, yard sale down there like I have since 1990, um, and I can do that. And uh, I don't know, you you can tell me what junk is or what debris is, um, or what, anything else. But the fact is, the stuff goes. I put the stuff there and it disappears. I bring more stuff in and it disappears. Um, I'm having a, a penny yard sale, which I can do under our bylaws. Um, so either way, uh, you can't you can't bring me back. I'm already in court for this. I mean, this is just harassment by this town. We know what it's all about. It's about the yellow sign. Uh, the yellow sign, no matter what happens in court, we're going to have a sign down there one way or the other. Um, so the town is going to be spending probably upwards of 100000 by the time you're done with me. Because um, I'm not going away. Um, so basically, I'm running a yard sale down there. It's a penny. Cups down there. It's an honor system. And I've been doing it since 1990. Um, like I said, this is harassment by Mr. Thomo as well, personal harassment. Uh, counsel, what do you say to the uh, defense of an appeal and or yard sale? Sure. Um, just so that you know, though, um, as, as you probably know, what is in the federal court is an appeal of this board's earlier decision that found that a special permit granted back in 2003 mm. had expired. All right. The, what, what's not in court is whether or not Mr. Holdcraft can store junk and debris on the front of, of uh, 6 South Maple Street. Um, in fact, to the extent that the, that, that the special permit is even a, 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 a relevant inquiry here, that particular special permit, which this board found had already expired, but even if, if you were to, to think about that, the special permit says no items will be left outside of the building at any time. So what is, what is before the federal court is whether or not this board correctly found that the permit had expired, not whether or not that there was a violation of the permit or, or anything that is currently before you here today. With respect to a, a so-called um, uh, yard sale, I, I think that from the information that I've been provided, and, and certainly that, that Mr. Uh, Thomo has talked about here, is there has been stuff out there for the last month and a half, two months. So if you're to find that somebody putting a sign out that has a junkyard and says free, a penny, is a yard sale, I would suggest that your definition would, would essentially swallow up this open air, uh, the prohibition against open air storage of junk down there. Mr. Holdcraft is also under an order by the land court to remove the junk and other debris at 90 Lake Road and to lawfully dispose of that property and to provide the town with documentation. So he's just at least from what the zoning enforcement officer has just testified to, he appears to be just shuffling this around. If it's junk down there and he brings it up here, it's junk up here. Is that what you're doing, Dave? Uh, first of all, he's first of all, we're not talking about 90 Lake Road. So we, we are. are you taking uh, excuse me. Can no, I can you, I talk? You can. I asked you a question. Are you no, that's not true. That's not true. What he just said, so you're not and I will explain. Junk from Lake Road and bringing it to Maple. Some of the stuff I am, which I can do. So it is true. Some of it I can do that, yes, I can do that. There's nothing that says I can't do that. Number two, storage. Nothing is being stored up there. It's a yard sale, and anyone in this room can testify. That stuff doesn't stay there. It's new stuff all the time. I can have a yard sale there. Right now I'm operating a yard sale there. Show me in the bylaws where it shows me that I cannot have a yard sale. Show me, okay? 90 Lake Road has nothing to do with this. Nothing's being stored there. I'm having a yard sale there, period. That's what I'm doing. This is all about the yellow sign. That's what this is all about. So, um, as far as the appeal, yes, in federal court, the appeal states three things that was violated in my permit. It stated shrubbery, signage, 
and stuff being left on the property. And now you're bringing me back up again because I'm leaving stuff on the property again. So you're double, you're, you're double jeopardy me again. It's all under that, it's all under that permit. And that's what's in federal court right now. The whole thing. You're bringing me back in again for the same thing again. The stuff being left outside. Okay, so I'm not doing that. I'm running a yard sale. There's a big sign that says yard sale on my fence. Everyone in this town knows that that's what's going on. The issue before the federal court, which I argued very recently, is whether or not, and, and this board can take it, its own uh, notice <clears throat> of what happened during the, um, the, the special permit expiration appeal. This board <clears throat> voted four to one that said that the 2003 special permit <clears throat> had expired by its terms. That, was, that decision was then appealed to the Worcester Superior Court in which Mr. Holdcraft then added a civil rights claim for a violation of his First Amendment right. We removed that to federal court. That's what's before the federal court. Mr. Holdcraft is confusing <clears throat> the fact that Mr. Tomo, if you recall, had actually issued an enforcement order. Um, what precipitated the appeal to you about the expiration of the permit was that there was a request for an enforcement saying that the permit had expired. Mr. Tomo <coughs> found out, uh, determined that he didn't believe it had expired, but that there were violations of that order. Uh, not being satisfied, the complainant came to this court, they came to this board and said it's expired. You said it's expired. So the only issue before the federal court is whether or not that permit is expired. Not whether or not the conditions that Mr. Tomo has put on it were, were lawful. With respect to this yard sale, I, I think that to the extent that there is no definition in there about a yard sale, that is certainly within your purview to say that a yard sale doesn't mean that you can put junk out on your front lawn 24-7, six months of the year. So that, can, can I stop you right there? Yeah. I have, I have a kind of an understanding where this board is going to go. My <coughs> only issue is with that appeal mm -hmm. being in process. We talked about this at the last hearing. Basically, nothing happens until that appeal is resolved in court. My personal belief, and it, it, it wasn't coincidental, you mentioned the shrubbery and Mr. Thomo stating that it was just, he was not conforming. It had nothing to do with the special permit. I think it was like the next day, Mr. Holcraft went out with a can of spray paint and painted the yard sale on the fence. So to me, that is part of it because that shed in that process was part of selling junk or the yard sale, however we're defining it. I, I, have, I have a huge issue with taking property from Lake Street and bringing it down there. I, I guess I don't quite understand your question. If, if, if you believe like I say, the federal case is all about whether or not that 2003 special permit expired. expired. Yeah. The and, special and through that discussion, which you were here for, yeah. everything under the under the umbrella was brought up for that special permit. It, the, the sign, mm -hmm. the shed, the mm -hmm. shrubbery, mm -hmm. the yard sale was part of that because that was the signage. But we had the argument right. that the, the sign right. was supposed to be for a yard sale, not the big yellow one. It was just supposed to be for selling the stuff and the shed was supposed to be there to store the stuff. But that's not at the federal court level right now. The whole thing is that's a special well, permit. The, the whole, but, but, but only before the special, before the court is not whether or not Mr. Holcraft complied with the special permit, right? Because that's what the, your zoning enforcement officer had originally found. The special permit expired. Expired. That's whether it. or not your decision that said it was, that it was. But this takes two steps back because if it didn't expire, now he's going to be found that he's not in compliance with that special permit. That, well, if, if it's found that it didn't expire, if he, if he wins, then you are right. Then what we would do is we would go back to his enforcement order. But right now, what not the the, 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 the the open air storage of junk down there has really nothing to do with whether or not the permit expired. No. And again, no. this yard sale that has gone on now for twenty four seven and you know he, Mr. Tomo can, can you say a couple months, it's not a couple months, it's, it's probably over a decade. Nineteen ninety. Show me in here where it says I can't do it twenty four seven. Show me. 
Show me in here. I, I think no, no, no. I want you to show me. You, 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 you are assuming and making stuff up, okay? How much did? How much? Yeah. It doesn't say that. Okay. What's it? How much has he made on the yachts? That's not a question for me. That's not, not your that's business. That's my business. That's correct. Huh? There you go. There's no yachts here. Everyone knows that. That's, the, that's, not, that's, that's just an excuse. Everyone here knows that's just an excuse. It's a yard sale. And now, you know what? <clears throat> everyone I, here knows that. I, I know what the yard sale is about, but my issue yeah. is, is that, and we've had this discussion. Well, is let's just, not. Is that what it is? Not. It is what it is. All and right, I got a question to uh, ask the town council here. Okay, so if we're not in federal court, where are we going to, if we're not in federal court for uh, leaving stuff outside, shrubbery and signage, if we're not in federal court for all those things, what courtroom are we going into? Tell me, answer that question. Well, first of all, the, the, the zoning enforcement officer issued a, a, a cease and desist order, an, an enforcement order, that was never appealed to the ZBA, okay? So to the extent that that, that order that order was never appealed. It's a valid order. However, in, this, in, the, in, in the subsequent actions, after, the, after the, the order was issued, then the appeal of the special permit came to this board, and, the, and this board said that special permit expired. So as long as that special permit has expired, the zoning enforcement <laughs> order enforcing that special permit is in question, all right? It's not, we're not enforcing that order. What we're doing here is, is the, the added open air storage of junk. The issue about whether or not his enforcement order under the special permit is valid, is, is just, it's not something that's here before you right now. The, the really, the issue here is whether or not somebody can take junk debris, frankly, and I think he's admitted it, from a, a property that he has an order on right now to clean up, bring it up to another one and leave it there 24/7 with a sign, and then and, and say it's look, it's it's a it's a yard sale. I suggest that at some point, right? I can't find in your zoning bylaw that it says a yard sale allows you to to to, to put junk in your driveway from you know three o'clock in the afternoon until six o'clock at night, and then it has to be taken all in. But I think that the ordinary use of, and, and what everybody understands the yard sale to be, is not to essentially have stuff out there 24-7. I, I, I have a problem, Dave, with you taking stuff from Lake and bringing it to Helm when you have a court order saying you have to get rid of it and document how you get rid of it. That's correct. And I, I spoke to the judge and I told him what I was doing. He said, give me some receipts when people are taking it and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. There's nothing here that says in the law that says I can't take stuff from one house, a rental house, and bring it over to another property that I have. Where is it? No. And number two, as far as me not appealing, you violated me, the town violated me, this board violated me because you did not give me due process of when you first brought me in here on June 19th. You did not give me any certification of mail, you did not notify the abutters, and you did not notify me. I was only notified verbally. That's a violation of the open meeting law. And then you tagged four meetings, all illegal. And you know it, Jeff, and you went along with it. Mr. And Congress. that's in federal court, too. This is what we're dealing with here. Excuse me, right. Nick, I'm speaking right there, now. There is a history. You know, I'm speaking right now. now. So Keep all this, up. all the things that we're discussing here tonight is in court. It's in federal court. And if it's not in federal court, Jeff, what other court is there? There isn't. It's all in federal court. All right. That's where it is. So discussion for the board. Do you have questions, comments? Nothing? Nothing? But, uh, I guess, you know, I... Unfortunately, you know, I feel that, um, you know, someone does a yard sale, a yard sale is not something, like, again, it's 24 seven, seven days a week. I, you know, I want a yard sale, I come out, I put my stuff out for a weekend, I sell it, take it in. I don't think, I don't know, that's, that's my interpretation of a yard sale. Ken? Yeah. <coughs> Open to the public? Yes, sir. Um, so I was at the ZBA meeting in 2003. There were about 50 residents there that all essentially had the same thing to say about issuing a permit for that, that use of the bus. Um, resoundingly, no, not a lot of the to the neighborhood. You cited the specifics of the, the zoning bylaw. Can you say those again? The uh, three conditions? Yeah, the, you said hazardous conditions, storage of junk. Yes. What, what are the other conditions that are violated? 
Okay, any, uh, all uses which are excessively obnoxious, hazardous, or injurious to the neighborhood or to property in the vicinity. All open air storage of junk, salvage materials, and except as otherwise provided by this in this bylaw. Okay, so I think there's a violation of every one of those things, right? So I, I don't live right next door, I live two doors down from there. So um, about five years ago, I put my house for sale, and the, the first thing that the realtor said was, what's all that junk down there? That's gonna hurt the value of your home. I said, well, he's been doing that for 20 years. So then we find out this year that the, that, that 2003 zoning um, allowance had a bunch of conditions that were never enforced. We never followed up on. So it is interesting to the neighborhood. Really, Dave is a very shrewd businessman. This is not a yard sale. This is a cost avoidance measure for his business. He paid to clean out people's homes and properly dispose of that job. It's free to him. It's not free to me. It's not free to these other people in this town who have to go buy that ice oil every day. That, that cost us, cost us not only our money and the value of our homes, but our enjoyment of our homes, our ability to, to enjoy this neighborhood. I can have people come by and say, oh, you live in the bump in the book field that has all the junk there, right? Not in a nice book field, you can throw in the wet book field. When are we going to clean the town up? We need to start enforcing these, these zoning laws proactively instead of going after after the fact. We, we, we took Mr. Holcraft to court. He has, he's under a court order right now, so, and we're taking three other people to court too. So I understand you're taking proactive action now, but he said he's been doing it since 1990. I think it was in 2000, he's been doing it since then. So, I've only been in the zoning officer for a couple of so years. I understand Nick, that that's your, you know, you're doing a great job, but the town as a whole has not done a great job in forging our zoning law. It's like wait, wait if the police department waits for the phone to ring at the police department to enforce the law. What's the what's the use of having a law if you don't enforce it for action? I agree. Okay. So it, again, I, I can't stress enough about how it is injurious. I've seen people slow down to take a look there. People almost get in accidents because you know, all of a sudden someone slowed down. And you're looking for junk that they want to pick up. So it, it is a safety um, hazard. It's dangerous to the neighborhood. The other thing as well, I think it's just atrocious that we allow this to continue. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, question, the comment about, concerned about trash being taken from one property and taken to another place. Now, Lake Road is under a court order, correct? Correct. Yeah. But he still brings trash in over there. I mean, that's his business. That's a whole other issue. I, I'm, I'm, I have a huge issue, Don, with him taking stuff from Lake and bringing it over there. Uh, well, can I ask a question? It, can he still, because he's under a court order to clean it up, still bring in more trash? At 90 Lake Road? Yeah. I, I would think no. Yeah. It's not trash, though. Yeah. There's a difference between trash and old furniture. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dave? Yeah. Tony Otto. Um, so I just, uh, I, first of all, I think you're really reaching with the safety issue. I think I think we are going a little on the board. Um, I don't think it's a safety issue at all. I live right near there as well. Um, and to continuously say that it's junk and debris, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't know if last time any of you guys actually stopped by there and looked, but there's a lot of usable items there, quite, quite a few usable items there. I've taken quite a few things out there myself. I know a lot of other people that do. Um, so you keep saying it's junk and debris and it's just out open air storing it. If it was just junk and debris, I don't think anyone would take junk and debris. I don't want to just take debris to my house and throw it on my lawn. So it's obviously usable stuff, a lot of it is. And you know, in defense of Mr. Holcraft, he's, he's right, you know. I go by there and I see this stuff there. Next time I come around the block, I'll pull in there and see if there's anything I need. But at the end of the day, it's usually empty out. But a lot of, a lot of that stuff turns over. You shake your head all you want, but if you go by every day, I've you seen it. Out. I, 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 they're all the time. That's yeah. not true at all. It's yeah. more than two. one day or two days. It's like weeks at a time. Well, so maybe some stuff might last there, but usually it all gets picked up. So I just, I, you guys keep calling it junk and debris. And as, as a citizen of the town, I find it to be a lot of the stuff useful. Well, not all of it, but a lot of it's very useful. So I think it makes sense. Thank you. Yes, well, How would you feel if we allowed this whole crap to store in your front yard? Well, he's not storing your front yard. So we're not going to do a back and forth. Gentlemen, 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 we're not going to do a back and forth here. Thank you. Anybody I'm in else? a business district. Anybody else? Do we have a motion? Unless there's any. I'm sorry, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Dave? Thank you. I live on the common in a very lovely house. My children and I 
children come to visit me, <coughs> and they say, Mom, how are we ever going to sell your house? Well, we have to come by all the junky houses and the yellow sign and the crack of the yard. Maybe someone can come. Anybody else? Discussion through the board? Any? None? Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we, um, that would be the right term. To deny Mr. Holcraft's appeal? Or to, to, yes, to, Mr. Yeah. Holcraft's to deny Mr. Appeal. Holcraft's appeal um, in regards to the zoning enforcement officer um, violation. Second. Discussion? Um, I just want to be on record that the appeal is an issue to me, but Dave, I think it's overridden with Lake Road. I think you're bringing stuff from Lake Road to. to There's make. nothing that says I can't do that legally. No, that has no that has no issue on this on this on what we're talking about tonight. Doesn't matter if I'm coming from Lake Road or one of my other houses. It doesn't matter. I'm having a yard sale, and another thing is I'm not storing the stuff there. You keep using the word storage. It's not being stored there. I'm having a yard sale, and forget all that. I'm under an appeal right now for this in federal court. But so not, you guys are double-dipping me. Not, so basically, but you find me. I hope you find me wrong because I'm going to get you for harassment because that's what you're doing here. That's what the town's doing. We're building a case right now against this town. And Jeff can say and twist words around and do whatever he wants. He knows what's going on, too, because he's been discussed by my attorney to him. You're, there, you're harassing me. That's what you're I, doing. I, I think we have and a I'm gentleman. And I'm not going to break. gentleman that says he's not even paying for stuff and just taking it, that's, that's a violation of the Lake Road decision, isn't it? Well, he's supposed to provide documentation, um, and he has provided three pieces of paper, um, but there's a lot of stuff that he has not provided documentation that has been removed. But that, that has not come down to Route 9. You can't sit there and say where it went, because you don't know until I give you the documentation. All right, so we have a motion, discussion over. All in favor of denying Mr. Holcraft's appeal? Aye. 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 Opposed? You're opposed? It's going to be a four to one vote, Dave. You're well, I know. It's just part of the witch hunt, but I'm not giving up. The junk's not going away, and neither is the yellow sign. Thank you, everybody. I am going to adjourn the hearing at 7.45. See you guys in two weeks.